Hello, welcome, and thank you for watching today. This is going to be our second devotion that uh, I'm going to do with Pastor Andrew. Uh, today we're going to read three verses from 2 Corinthians. Um, before we get into this, uh, you know, my objective with this channel is to help get the Word of God out to as many people as we can. So if you like what we're doing and you like these devotions, can I ask you to share this with you, your friends, uh, anybody you know, maybe put it on Facebook and help get the word out there. That yeah. would be appreciated. The more people that can hear this word, the better. So we thank you in advance for doing that for us. Okay, so um, before we read the three verses, Pastor Andrew's going to open us in a little prayer. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for this time. And we were, really, we were able to speak on, on, on YouTube and, and to encourage people yes. and to... Maybe there are people who are struggling, Lord, and I pray for them right now. I pray that you would speak to them and, and bless their heart. And Lord, we thank you for this time again. We thank you for allowing us to be here, me and Gary, and all of us who are on. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to read uh, from Second Corinthians chapters 3, 4, and 5. And then Pastor Andrew is going to give some of his expert comments. Not expert, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're pretty good. Okay, here we go. So chapter 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. And for, for the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Amen. Okay. Amen. Pastor Andrew. So um, our objective really, as Gary said to, in this channel, is to, to help those people to, who are struggling maybe in their walk or anyone to grow in Christ. And that's my, as a, as a pastor, that's my one desire is to help people grow in Christ. And again, if, as I mentioned last time, you're always, you're always free to email me you know, if you would like yeah, if you have a question or you just like encouragement or you feel maybe you've been disconnected a little bit from Christ, email me. Uh, send me an email or just post on the video and, and I will try to get back to you uh, or Gary will. And I, I'm so encouraged by even the comments we received last yes. week. It's really great to see that we're, we have this interaction, you, know, you and us, and it's really wonderful. I know that it's not easy living a life in this world as a believer. And if you're not a believer, if you haven't yet put, put, put your trust in Him, it's still not easy. It's, it's actually harder if you're not. But even when you come to know God, it's a hard life because it's, it's a struggle every single day. And I think that the scripture that we just read talks about that, about how it is a struggle. And um, let me just read this again, you know, verse by verse. Um, I won't really focus on verse 4, but it does say that, uh, we, do, we do walk in the flesh, but we're not waging war according to the flesh. I think that's really powerful that although we're walking in the flesh, you know, guys, we're walking in the flesh, my, uh, but, but we're not waging war according to the flesh. Wow, that's, that's powerful to, uh, to think about. That we're walking, you know, every day, whatever we're doing, we are in the flesh, right? We, we all have to acknowledge that. As, as, as believers in Christ, we are still walking in the flesh. But even though we walk in the flesh, we're not waging war in the flesh. And Paul is talking about warfare. That's another thing. He talks a lot about this war, war analogy. Uh, and we're fighting a war, right? It's a battle. There's a battle going on in our mind, in our, in our soul. There's a, there's, there's a battle against the flesh. And the flesh, behind the flesh... It's the devil. So he's the one behind our whole world system. So it says we don't wage war according to the flesh, but we are living in the flesh. And that's important again to, to realize. It says in verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. Family, this is the thing. This is the thing. Our warfare against the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. So what are the weapons of our warfare? 
you know, we can see this when we talk about the armor of God in Ephesians 6. The weapons of our warfare are spiritual weapons, and one of those is the Word of God. Now, you can see that in Hebrews uh, 4.12, if you want to look it up, talking about how the weapon of our warfare is, is, one of these weapons is the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit being the very Word of God, the Bible. So these weapons of our warfare are how we defeat, in our mind, we defeat our own selfish ambitions, which again is backed by the devil. It's like the devil is the general of this world, no? Something like that. In, in a war, you have a general, you have the five-star general who's, that's like Satan. Satan is just sort of overseeing the demons who are, are all around and, and even they can't get into us, they can't enter into us. But we are affected by that because we are living in a fallen world. And the weapons of our warfare are not of ourselves. It's not of human effort. It's of divine. It's, it's of God. God fights for us. So the term spiritual warfare does not mean we're fighting. It means that we're calling on God to fight. So if you are in your life, if you have some, some instances where you are being oppressed by your own thoughts, you can't, you, you can't seem to focus on God. You're struggling to gain a, a foothold in faith. You know, I, learned, I know a lot of us are, as we grow in Christ, we are struggling. Every day we, we struggle. I struggle. Yes. I know you struggle. Everyone struggles. But one thing that we can do against the struggle is to remember that this struggle belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The last verse, verse 5, says we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion against or raised against the knowledge of God. We destroy those things and we take captive every thought to Christ. Family, this is the thing. We, we, take, thought, we, we take captive every thought to Christ. Every thought, we give it to Christ and we say, God, take, take captive of this. This is, this is yours. I, I can't handle this. I cannot do this on my own. Maybe I have negative thoughts. Maybe I just have unbelief, whatever it might be. I cannot do it. I cannot eliminate these thoughts, no? But God can. Absolutely. God can. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, so when I first became a Christian, I struggled mm -hmm. with uh, unbelief. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, reading uh, chapter 3 as well, we, mm -hmm. we walk. Well, we walk in the flesh, we're not mm -hmm. waging war according to the flesh. So this is a spiritual war. Yeah, it's a spiritual war, Gary. Yeah. We, Against yeah. our own flesh, we walk in, in we walk in our, our flesh, but right. the war we wage is not according to the flesh, right? Yeah, so I, I definitely mm -hmm. struggled in mm -hmm. spiritual warfare, Yeah, for sure, oh, which, for is, sure. which is what, so um, ultimately, I, I completely believe in spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. and I think that was what pushed me away from God and led me to my 15 year walking in the shadow, like yeah. I talked last time. Um, it's uh, this is this is good mm -hmm. for me to talk to you and learn. I uh, hope, hope everyone is, is learning something here from reading these verses because uh, I'm just uh, not as familiar with some of this as I should be. And uh, mm -hmm. hearing from you really helps me try and understand it. So, we've been talking beforehand a few minutes, I'm trying to understand these verses, and you mm -hmm. understand them better than I do. But um, I, I can see in there that there's they're talking about. Uh, our spiritual warfare and mm. uh, the difficulties we have with, with belief, and uh, like you mm. said, we all we all have moments of doubt. Mm -hmm. um, even you, right? Oh, right. Yeah, sure, it happens a lot. Really, but sometimes, as I mentioned, those doubts can actually help bolster our faith if we give it to God, and that's what the verse is talking about: giving to God those doubts. Oh, and, and and that I can testify to because. Uh, I, since I've done that, I don't. Mm -hmm. I actually have very few moments of doubt. I mean, mm. like you said, we all have moments, but uh, my moments are very small moments now. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you know? Amen. Like um, the other week when I was having a, a, a problem with my child being sick, mm. which uh, I did a video about, and I had just a moment mm. of doubt, mm. worried about. Mm -hmm. um, what would happen what, if something happened to my child, you know, mm. would I still believe? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. But I mm. doubted for a little bit, got my head together, 
and realize that no matter what, I need to trust mm -hmm. in God, whatever happens. Amen. And you, and you did, you did, you did that. You did trust in God. Yeah, I, I did, and and things have turned out good. So, mm -hmm. as as they usually do when we trust in God. That's great. Yeah. So, um, great, great, yeah. uh, great verses. So we do have a lot of sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. We we do have a lot of things that that try to. You know, you know, the devil is is has created this world, this world system to give us doubts, to prompt doubts inside of us, and in everything that we do, there there are going to be doubts. You're like, will God save my little girl, or will yeah. God provide me financial? That's that's my weakness is the, the financial thing. I I continually doubt against about finances. Uh, I shouldn't say continually, but I I do often. If, if I'm low on finances, I, I have a lot of doubts. So I still struggle with that. So this verse is really saying, yeah, yeah about your, your, the healing of your daughter, about the financial things. This verse is saying, demolish those pretenses, those mm -hmm. thoughts, um, even arguments against God. Well, will God provide? No, I don't think God will provide. That, that's, no, Demoli destroy that. God will provide. He has promised. But in our fleshly nature, we don't think God will really provide or we don't think God will really heal. We don't believe sometimes. And a lot of times, and I'm sure for you as well online, there are times that you disbelieve God. And we need to demolish those thoughts in Christ. And I'll give, you, give my um, testimony sometime other, some other time uh, about how God delivered me from a lot of those. And I'm still not, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. But God did deliver me from a lot of those doubts. I'm looking forward to hearing your yeah. testimony. Okay, thank you. I haven't heard it. <laughs> so we'll save that until you're ready to, All right. to All right. do that. And, uh, I look forward to that. Great. Yeah. Anyway, Andrew, do you want to um, close us in prayer? Yeah. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm just so thankful for this time that we've had with this online family. I'm so thankful for being with Gary and for hearing his story and to be able to bounce this devotion off each other, this, these scriptures, and, the, and Lord, just to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful, wonderful to be here and to be, have this platform where we can tell people about your goodness. Thank you. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless everybody, and uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for amen. watching. Bye-bye.